Today we're going to be talking about how to find the vertex, axis, focus, directrix, and asymptotes of a hyperbola, and then how to draw and label the graph of the hyperbola. And in this particular problem, we've been given the equation 4x squared minus y squared minus 24x minus 4y plus 28 equals 0. And we can't even tell necessarily from looking at this equation that we're dealing with a hyperbola. In order to figure that out, we need to first get it into standard form. So we can even pretend that we don't know what it is yet. We just need to get it in standard form so we can tell. The way that we'll do that is by completing the square with respect to both x and y. So we need to collect our x terms together. So we'll get 4x squared minus 24x together and then collect our y term. So we'll subtract, and then we have y squared, because we have a negative y squared here, and we have a negative 4y, but because we have this negative sign out in front here, we'll say plus 4y. And then we have the 28 by itself. We'll subtract 28 from both sides and move it to the right as negative 28. So now let's complete the square with respect to x and y. In order to do so, in the case of x, we'll need to first divide through here by 4 to remove the constant coefficient on the x squared term here. So we'll get 4 times x squared minus 6x minus y squared plus 4y equals negative 28. Now for x, we'll take the coefficient on the first degree x term here, which is negative 6. This is our standard procedure for completing the square. We'll divide by 2, and that gives us negative 3. Then we take whatever our result is here, and we square it, and that gives us a positive 9. 9 is what we'll add to x squared minus 6x in order to complete the square of what's inside our parentheses here. So what we'll get is 4 times x squared minus 6x plus 9, but since we added 9, we need to make sure that we subtract 9 as well so that we don't actually change our equation. We'll come back to that in a second. Now for y squared, we'll take the constant coefficient on our first degree y term here, which is 4. We'll divide it by 2, and that's going to give us 2. We'll take our result and we'll square it, and that's going to give us 4. So we're going to be adding 4 here. So we get minus y squared plus 4y plus 4. Now, keep in mind, because we added 4 here, we also have to subtract 4, so we'll do that, and we'll get equals negative 28. Now, if we change our square polynomials into squared terms here, we'll get 4 times x minus 3 squared minus 9 minus, in this case here, y plus 2 squared minus 4 equals negative 28. We want to go ahead and remove these constants, so we're just left with the squares. We'll distribute the coefficient. We'll get 4 times x minus 3 squared minus 36 minus y plus 2 squared minus a negative 4 is plus 4 equals negative 28. Now we want to move all of our constants to the right-hand side, so 4 times x minus 3 squared. We'll add the 36. We'll be left with minus y plus 2 squared. So negative 36 plus 4 is negative 32. When we add 32 to both sides, the constants will go away on the left-hand side, and on the right, we'll just be left with 4 because negative 28 plus 32 is 4. Now, in order to remove the coefficients from these squared x and y terms here, we'll divide through by 4. Now we want to remove constant coefficients on our x and y terms here. In order to do so, we'll divide through by 4 to remove the 4 that's here. And what we'll get, we'll write it up here, what we'll get is x minus 3 squared over 1 minus y plus 2 squared over 4 equals 1 on the right-hand side when we divide 4 by 4. Now we have an equation that's in standard form, and we can compare this to the table that I have on my website of hyperbola equations. So if we take a look at that, what we notice is that we have an equation for a hyperbola in standard form. The way that we know that is that our right-hand side is equal to 1, and notice each of these equations is equal to 1 on the right-hand side. We have a minus sign here between our terms, which is an indicator of, our, of a hyperbola because all of these have a negative sign. 
And in our denominators here, we have one, which is a perfect square, and we have four, which is a perfect square. That's not required. If you had five, then your values of you know a or b would be square root of five, but it makes it more obvious that this is a hyperbola. And then in the numerators, we have these squared terms for x and y. One thing we notice right off the bat is that we have a shifted hyperbola because we have x minus 3 and y plus 2. If we had x minus 0 and y minus 0, or in other words, just x squared and y squared in our numerators, then we'd either have the equation in this first row or the equation in the third row, which are hyperbolas that are centered at the origin. But in our case, our center is shifted. We have a shifted hyperbola, and we just need to figure out whether or not it's a hyperbola that opens up and down or a hyperbola that opens to the right and to the left. And the way that we determine that is whether we have y minus x, a y minus an x term, or an x minus a y term. In our case, we have x minus y, so that puts us in the fourth row here. Notice the x and the y. So we have x minus y, which means we have a shifted hyperbola that opens to the right and to the left. So we're going to be using the formulas that are in the fourth row of this chart here. And one of the really easy ways to find all the values for the vertex axis, focus, directix, center, and asymptotes for this hyperbola is to identify the values that we can pull out of our equation here in standard form, which will be h, k, a, b, and c. And just so we can leave this chart up, we can go ahead and write those along the bottom here, and then we'll erase everything else in the middle and continue to work the problem. So notice that we have h and k, we have x minus h, and in our case, we have x minus 3. So we know that h is equal to 3. We also have in our equation here y minus k. Well, we have y plus 2, so, that we, so we know that k is equal to negative 2. In this equation here, a is with the x term, and we have 1 in the denominator of our x term here, so we know a squared is equal to 1, a is equal to positive or negative 1, because we take the square root of 1 to get a. We know that b squared is equal to 4, the denominator on the y term here, so b squared equals 4, which means that b is equal to positive or negative 2, which we get by taking the square root of 4. Notice that we're going to need a value for c for the focus. Well, in order to get c squared, we'll take a squared plus b squared. So c squared is equal to a squared, which is 1, plus b squared, which is 4. So we get c squared equals 5, or c equals positive or negative square root of 5. Now, those are all the components we're going to need to find the vertex axis, focus, directix, center, and asymptotes of our hyperbola. So we can go ahead and erase the board and start working on those. Okay, so now we can work from our picture of a hyperbola that opens to the right and to the left. You can find this on my website as well. So the first thing we want to do is find our center, which is hk. So our center is going to be at hk, which we know in our case is 3, negative 2. That's where we're going to center our hyperbola. If we want to find vertices, which are these points right here that are being pointed to by these arrows, we'll say vertices are going to be at h minus a comma k. So in our case, we have 3 minus 1, so we get 2 comma k, which is negative 2, and 3 plus 1, which is 4 comma negative 2. So those are our vertices. Our foci are going to be the points just inside of our hyperbolas here at h minus c comma k and h plus c comma k. So we'll get h which is 3 minus c, so minus root 5, so we get 3 minus root 5 comma negative 2, which is k, and 3 plus root 5 comma negative 2 for our foci. For our axes, we'll have the major axis, which runs through the vertices. In our case, the line y equals k. So our major axis is y equals negative 2. Our minor axis is x equals 3, which runs vertically here in between the graph. Now we'll take directrix, and those are going to be these two lines here in blue that run halfway between the center 
and the vertex. So if we take the distance here between the center and the vertex and we divide it by two, that'll give us the point where the directrix will intercept the major axis. The equation for those are just, in this case, x equals h minus a over two and plus a over two. h we know is three, so we get three minus a is one, so we get three minus one half and three plus one half. So we're gonna get x equals five halves and x equals seven halves for our two directrix. And then the last thing we need is asymptotes. And we have here the equations for the asymptotes, y minus k equals positive or negative b over a times x minus h. So for asymptotes here, we'll get y minus k, so y minus negative two is y plus two equals negative b, which is negative two over a, which is one, times x minus h. We know h is three, so we get minus three. Keep in mind, we're either gonna have a positive or negative sign here. We're just doing the equation for the one with the negative sign. So when we simplify this, we get y plus two equals negative two times x minus three. When we distribute the negative two, we get y plus two equals negative two x plus six. When we subtract two from both sides, we get y equals negative two x plus four. Now, if we make that a positive sign instead, here we'll get positive two, we'll get positive two here, but what we'd end up with at this step is y plus two equals two x minus six, and when we subtracted two from both sides, we get y equals positive two x minus four. So those will be our two equations for asymptotes. Now we just need to go ahead and draw and label the graph. So now that we've got our axes set up, we'll go ahead and identify our center. So our center is gonna be at the point three, negative two. So we'll find three, negative two, and our center will be right here. Now our vertices are gonna be at two, negative two, right here, and four, negative two. So four, negative two, right here. Those are really easy to draw, we'll check those off. If we wanna draw our asymptotes to start getting a picture of what the graph's gonna look like, we can sketch these lines here, y equals negative two x plus four and y equals two x minus four. Keep in mind that your asymptote should always run through the center point here that we drew before, the center HK. So we have our asymptotes, and what that tells us now is that the graph of the hyperbola is gonna run through the vertices but skim along these asymptotes here. So the graph is gonna look something like this. It's gonna come closer to that asymptote, but then it's gonna come through the vertex and out this way toward the other asymptote. So it's gonna be, in this case, a really shallow hyperbola. Now if we draw our axes, our major axis is gonna be at x equals negative two. It's gonna run through the center and the vertices. So our major axis here is y equals negative two. Our minor axis is gonna run through the center in the opposite direction, but between the graph of the hyperbola here, so it's gonna run this way through the center, that's gonna be the minor axis at x equals three. And so, oops, we checked off axes when we meant to check off asymptotes, but we've done axes, we've done asymptotes. We can now easily draw the directrix. Those are halfway between the center and the vertices. And so in this case, our directrix are gonna be right about here, halfway between each of them. So in this case, this is the line x equals seven halves, and then we have the line x equals five halves right about here. Those will be our directrix. And then last but not least, we have foci, which are gonna be at three minus square root of five and three plus square root of five along the major axis. So three minus square root of five gives us about 0.75. So we're gonna be right about here at then negative two. And three plus square root of five gives us about 5.2. So one, two, three, four, 5.2, right about here, 5.25. So there's our foci there along, again, the major axis. So we have here the center, both vertices, here, these two points, 
and then both foci here at these points notice that all of them are along the major axis we have the major axis the minor axis our two directrices and our asymptotes i'll leave you guys to label all of the points on the graph but that's how you find all of these values for a shifted hyperbola that opens to the left and to the right so i hope you found that video helpful if you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.